That's true, I'm not wearing hockey pants, but I am very excited to share with you another, uh, you know, tutorial. It's going to be amazing, nonetheless. Anyway, so here we are uh, with a pretty cool shot of Petros's eye. Check that shit out. And, um, the, yeah, you've probably seen it on my blog. If you haven't, whatever. Gonna have uh, my first tutorial in DaVinci Resolve Light today. So, yeah. Um, a couple of things that are worth mentioning about this tutorial. So, it wasn't just a color grade. You'll notice on the finished shot, I did get rid of that little reflection on his eyeball there. Because I didn't like it. It was pissing me off. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to DaVinci Resolve, this amazing thing that no one knows how to use, and even people that do use it badly. So, sorry if I offended anyone there. <laughs> anyway, so here we have these uh, five tabs down the bottom. Uh, yeah, good design means that we can have a look at the media on our hub drive and just flick through that here. That's pretty simple, right? The one thing to note about DaVinci Resolve is you do need to say, hey, make sure you look at this drive because you notice how I've got all these letters here. Just pretend I plug in a hard drive right now. You can't actually look at it unless you go to preferences and, and then go plus and then go to your computer and then add a drive that's not in that list. And then press OK, and then restart DaVinci, and then open it again. Then you have access. So yeah, that's a bit of a weird one. The next tab is Conform. The Conform tab is basically where you create a timeline. This is your NLE style section. And basically, it will uh, Resolve will create a timeline for you, a master timeline, but it will be locked. So that's fine. Just means we can't edit anything on this actual, actual timeline, even though we can start color correcting. However, I usually like to just go Create, New, and just call that mad shit what up it's what I usually start my timelines with and uh, if you click empty timeline guess what it'll be empty so if we don't we press create new it's gonna add all the clips that are in this bin and all the clips that are in your bin are what you chose over here in your media section for example if we go to V and we go to Luke Lorna writer director of the snap factory we go to day three and we just drop that clip in there that's where it goes, and then when we go to conform, that clip will be part of our bin. So that's how that roughly works. And uh, yeah, the next thing is we're going to go to the color tab. This is the exciting part. The color tab is basically showing us all of our clips that we just created on that timeline. You can have multiple layers on a timeline, but we're not going to get into that today. And uh, yeah, the other cool thing is everything's pretty simply laid out. So you have your basic tools uh, down the bottom here, so your three-way color correctors, you lift gamma gain and stuff like that. And uh, then we also have these additional cool tools here like curves. We have qualifiers, masks, the tracker, sharpness and softness, a key transparency, in other words, um, resizing and shit like that, 3D stuff which we don't use in light and burn stuff in. Which we're not doing that either today. But here's how basically Resolve works. So if you followed my other tutorials with Edius, you'll understand the basics of color correction or you know, just where to get started and what these tools do. So I'm not going to go through that too much today, but what I'm going to show you is, okay, so what are the components of Resolve? Uh, the other thing I've missed here is the keyframing section, which is atrocious. I hate the keyframes in Resolve, but that's just me. And then we have our monitor up here, which is, you know, pretty straightforward. we got play, rewind, stop, and uh, that's cool. You can just uh, resize that with your wheel, and if you press your wheel, you can move it around. That's pretty cool as well. If you press Control F, gives you a full screen, control F again goes back. So then we have these little things here which are called stills, it's pretty cool. And uh, the stills actually hold color correction information, so they're really handy. So if you want to grab a still, just right click on your shot and go grab still and boom, here's our still. Now the cool thing is if we double click a still, we just scrub back and forth and it shows us uh, you know, what we're comparing to, what we're trying to match for example. Or, if we say click on this clip here, for example, press Ctrl W to get rid of the wipe. Let's grab uh, maybe this shot here. And if we just, uh, the middle wheel click on this still, it will apply the attributes from this still to that clip in one click. And uh, there actually are no attributes there, so let's try this one. And there we go. So that's how that works. Uh, if I'm going too fast, bad luck. This isn't really a DaVinci tutorial. I'm just going to show you how I made that eye look cool. So hopefully you learn a few things along the way. Now, the other thing I haven't talked about here is the nodes. Now, nodes aren't actually complicated at all. They're actually really simple to use. So what we're going to do is just glide across our timeline here and find this eye shot. Where are you, eye shot? 
I know you're in here somewhere. I know we're getting close now. Hey, all right. Eye shot. So, the way nodes work is if you press Alt S, boom, 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 we have multiple nodes. Now, each one of these nodes is designed to allow you to switch them on and off and manipulate different color aspects. For example, on node number one, we could just balance our shot in terms of luminance. So we're just gonna grab our black point and drag that down and our white point and drag that up and maybe drop our mids a little bit. So now node one, we can turn it on and off and that allows us to see that change. Pretty cool, node two, we can just make it yellow. And now node two, we can turn on and off. So that's the beauty of nodes. They just allow you to separate each correction individually and be able to play with those. So they're pretty cool. So I'm just gonna reset all nodes now and let's go ahead and get started. So if we have a look at this uh, finished product here, you'll notice it's a little bit different. The eye's bigger, for example. The grading is a hell of a lot nicer. And um, I actually haven't finished yet because I haven't removed that reflection of the eyeball thingy yet, which we're gonna get into. But, all right, so how did I go about getting this look? Well, let's press Control w to get rid of my wipe, and let's go ahead and get started. First thing I did was went to the Resize tab, which is here, and I just went to Sizing, Zoom, and Zoom that in. Pretty simple. Now, the cool thing is, and the important thing to note about DaVinci Resolve Lite is it only works in a 2K space, or 1080p. So this footage is 4K, which means that when we're zooming in and out here, uh, we're actually not losing any resolution until we hit our 4K uh, portion, which is 2 that's at full resolution. So there, yeah, thank you once again, Red, for making awesome cameras. And thanks to Vinci for, uh, you know, Blackmagic for making this absolutely free. It's totally amazing. So yeah, I just wanted to zoom that shot in a little bit. That's the first thing I did. Now, the next thing I did, we can just pan and tilt that a little bit. Move that around, beautiful. Next thing I wanna do is click on node one and just like I did a second ago, we go to show scope. So I'm just gonna give it a black point. So here's a black point here and a white point here. And uh, yeah, next thing I'm gonna do is go Alt S. Now, the white balance is a little bit off. I feel it's too magenta, so I'm just gonna push mid-tones in the opposite of magenta, which is green. That's looking a bit better. Make sure the eyes whites stay white. Looking pretty cool. Now, whenever you're doing color correction, especially with a shot like this, the whole idea is to force your viewer to look in a certain spot. So, for my liking, uh, the way I lit this, Everything else is overlit. I really want people to focus on that eye. And if we look at this shot, it looks a hell of a lot better, right? It totally does. So what I did there was just created a mask. So if we just go to the mask and we just click on that circle like so, expand the yellow bit. Pretty cool. Then we just go invert. And then I'm gonna go to my curves and just drop exposure using the middle of my curves. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Something like that and um, you know what, I'm also gonna grab my blacks, just crush them a little bit more in my mids. And the other thing is, it's looking too red here, so I'm gonna desaturate that. But I'm gonna do a cool little technique where I just desaturate the reds only. So we can go to our curves, go over here to custom, and go hue versus saturation. And then we could just click on that, and then it gives us that point of color. And then we can increase saturation or decrease saturation. Pretty cool, pretty easy. All right. So yeah, just desaturating the edges a little. Uh, maybe introduce a little bit more magenta there. Okay, starting to look a bit better. Next thing I might want to do is just uh, add an outside node. So the way these masks work is on node number two we have a mask here and we've just affected the outside of the node because we inverted it. But then what I can do is right click on that node, go add outside node, and now that's only going to affect the inside of that. So uh, what I might want to do there is just increase brightness slightly and increase sharpness a little bit to so 47. The way this blur and sharpening thing works is if it's at 50 there is none of either and if it's above 50 it's soft and if it's below 50 it gets sharp. Just a recommendation anything above say 47 with red footage starts to look ridiculously grainy and sharp but yeah. Oh yeah another uh, cool shortcut is Control D which allows you to if you have a look up here switch a node on and off. So you can go Control F to view your shot, Control D to just have a look at what you've done. Pretty cool, okay, we're getting there. I might just bring that back to 46. Nah, who cares, 47, done. All right, the other thing I wanna do is uh, make the eye look better. So I'm gonna go Alt S, grab another mask, and uh, I'm just gonna shrink this down a little bit. And uh, yeah, 
actually, yeah, that looks pretty good. So the other cool thing about DaVinci is it's got a tracker. Now this actual eye moves, so what we're going to do is go to this track point and just press play, and you'll notice that this little mask is going to stick to our eyeball pretty damn well. How amazing is that? And then we can go back to this point here and just press rewind, and it's going to do its best to track it until that eyelid closes. Boom. All right. So I told you I hated the keyframes in Resolve. It's absolutely true. So what we need to do is turn this mask off. We'll reduce the opacity of it. Uh, yeah, by the time it, as the iris, as the uh, eyelid closes. So first we need to create a keyframe to say, hey, hold this mask where it is. Um, the way to do that is we're on node number four. Make sure you double click it so it's got a yellow border. Then click A on number four here so keyframes are enabled. Then just move it once. So now a keyframe has been added automatically. Go to your key and let's just move that as well. So we'll just uh, move it below one and then back to one again. So now it's added a keyframe and we can open and expand this and have a look. The keyframes actually have been added for the window, the circle window and defocus thingy. So as we move back in time a few frames, we're going back, 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 back up to about there. Then I want my key to be zero and basically the output key gain is referring to transparency opacity so at the beginning of that shot it's completely see-through and by the time the eye opens to there it's completely 100 percent gained pretty cool okay so next thing i want to do is actually affect that node so all i've done is created a mask and added a couple of keyframes so what i'm going to do is go to the brightness a little bit up that shit and also go saturation up that shit and uh, yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. I might even add a bit of magenta or yellow into there. Hell, why not? So now that mask uh, actually tracks our eyeball, which is super cool. And if we look at the before and after, it's already starting to come to life, isn't it? The power of raw and ugh, it's just good shit everywhere. All right, so what do we need to do next? Maybe just add one final note. So Alt S and I'm just gonna go to my curves go to my custom and just add some extra contrast here. Okay. So that's looking pretty good and now I want to render that out. So to render stuff out, let's just skip this gallery section and go straight to deliver. Now deliver, the way this works, pretty self-explanatory. It's just asking you what format do you want to render to? Well I want QuickTime and yeah, 422 on compressed 10 bits, sounds good to me. Then I'm gonna go frame rate, which has already been set at the beginning of my project. You can't change that later on. So render job two, pretty self-explanatory. V renders, beautiful. And then you might wanna just go down here to file name. You can say use source file name, you can create your own file name. And then finally we click add job. Um, actually, before we do that, we actually only want to render this clip because if I went any further, it would have rendered the whole entire timeline. So I'm just going to right click on that and go render this clip. So now I'm going to go add job. It's asking me, you sure there's already clips in there, you might overwrite one. I'm like, word, what up, don't worry about it. Continue, start render. Boom, so once that's finished, let's get the hell out of Resolve, don't save. And we're going to go into After Effects because I want to get rid of that little uh, reflection thing there. So. Bear with me for a second. Now while After Effects is loading, um, we also want to open Photoshop. So hopefully you've got lots of money and uh, you've purchased all this software like I have. So, so we just double click in here and we bring that bad boy in. Renders, where are you, hello? And then we're just gonna drop that into a new composition. So here we have a new composition now, how the hell are we gonna get rid of this eyeball? Well, just in Photoshop, normally you would just clone that shit out, right? Well, you know what? That's the first thing we're gonna do. So let's find a nice frame where it's nice and wide open like that one, for example. And then we go, make sure it's on full resolution, which it is. And then we go composition, save frame as Photoshop layers. And um, here's one I prepared earlier, but let's just call this my track patch. Boom, so now we have a clip that we're gonna work with. So let's go ahead and open that. And um, I think it's in here, which is a bit all over the place. Doesn't matter. I attract patches. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is a quick Photoshop tutorial. I'm just gonna grab 
Uh, you know, there's a number of ways to do this. We could use the cloning stamp, just alt click with the cloning stamp and go boom and just pan over that. That's pretty much done, right? Actually looks all right. I wasn't expecting that to look good. If you use the bracket keys up and down, it, it's a real quick shortcut to do that. So we're just gonna grab another piece of eye here and just paint the edge of that so it looks a bit better. And you know what? It looks terrible, but you could do a better job, believe me. So now we've gotten rid of that, what we wanna do is go File, Save As, and then we go, yeah, let's just save it as I tracked patch with two Z's. <laughs> and now let's go back to After Effects and import that. So, where are we? Where are we? We're going, we're almost there. And, uh, huh. With patch zzz. And uh, we want to make sure that that is footage and press OK. So, we, let's just drag that patch on top of here. So now we have a fixed reflection. Pretty cool. So how do we make that stick? So yeah, this is the tough part. Well, not really. So let's just turn that layer off for a second. Go to this layer and we want to go to track motion. Now this is really cool and uh, you might just think that you, you know, you've used, you've done Andrew Kramer's tutorials before, just throw on this tracker and boom, but you'll find that it won't stick very well. It jiggles around a little bit. So to get a little bit more accuracy, what I've found is if you use uh, the rotation as well. That gives you two track points and it just helps the tracker settle the F down. So now we've got those two points here and let's just analyze forward. Seems to be doing a relatively good job. And uh, if we just press U on the keyboard, it shows us those track points. Let's go back here and analyze back. Now it's gonna screw up. As soon as that eye closes, boom. Destroyed, shot, ruined. Anyway, we have track data here now, which is really handy. So what we're gonna do now is right click, go new, uh, null object and then we want to edit target make sure we're pointing to the null object press OK and then press apply now what's that what that's going to do is add all that tracking data to that null object in uh, terms of X and Y position coordinates press OK nothing seems to really have happened because we still need to turn on our eye patch and go to our pick whip here and just parent it to the null object so now our patch sticks to our eyeball and if we just go to transparency and just lower that a little bit, you can see it's doing exactly that. So now what we can do is just draw a mask only around that little patch that we created. So let's grab our mask tool, make sure we've selected our patch, zoom in a little bit, and just draw a really detailed mask. Now, if you press V and then click anywhere outside of the mask, it then allows us to move the mask around, so we can do that. And then we can go back to the pen tool and just reshape accordingly pretty amazing stuff very powerful stuff really and uh, yeah next thing we can do is feather the mask so if we click on that press F for feather we can just feather that out some and if we press M for mask M M M M M then we can expand the mask a little bit alright so now we have a patch it roughly sticks to our eyeball. Now the example I've done online is much better because I did a much better cloning job in, in Photoshop. But look how much cooler this shot looks without that stupid little reflection. It looks way cooler, I reckon. Anyway, so there's a problem though. What happens when the eyelid closes? Well, I had a few dramas here. There's a couple of twitches there which were a problem. So I got rid of, I just basically went in and keyframed that myself, got rid of the rotation properties. And then when the eye closed here, what I did was I went to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. Let's add a keyframe for Curves, so press E for Effect. Um, add a keyframe for Curves there. Add a keyframe for Curves there. Go back to this one. And then we can just play with our Curves and just lower stuff to try and match the shadowed eye. Okay, that's getting there, right? And then by the time it opens, keyframes interpolate those values. Beautiful. But the thing that was difficult was, now I've got this patch here, and it's sort of covering my eyelid. Even though it's for one frame, it still looks shit. So what I did was I duplicated the eye, the actual moving eye, put that on top of my layer, and then what I did was just moved it down a little bit, and then grabbed another mask tool and just said, hey, I only want to use one frame of this eyelid. So now you can see one frame of my eyelid. And, uh, you know, 
I just used that. Once again, we're going to feather the edges, so just go F for feather, feather those edges. And then we can literally just move the position of that down a little bit. So now we don't have that thing, and it's only for one frame, so it works, trust me. So then all you're going to do is just go to the transparency of that and just say, make it zero here, make it 100% here. Actually, let's just drag that back a little bit. Make it zero. Well, oh, no, we want it actually there as well. So we, let's make it. Oh, there it is, fixed. Uh, so that frame beforehand will make that zero. There it's on, and then it's off again. Now with our little eye patch too, we're going to be careful because we want that to be completely zero zero opacity here. And make sure we set a keyframe for that. Make sure it's fully on here. Okay, cool. So you get the idea, that's how I did it. This has been a train wreck of a tutorial, but uh, hopefully it's given you some insight. Get it? See what I did there? To um, how to make you know a shot look a hell of a lot better using multiple tools. So I'm Matt Scott, thanks again. Peace out.